Hi everybody, wilder and wilder. <laughs> and with my um, mask, so I have been actually down to the local shop, which is usually deserted when I have been there. I don't go very often. There is a very, very small market now in the village on a Saturday morning. It always has been, but it's very small now. And, uh, and unbelievably in the shop, there was a queue, practically the length of the shop, it's astonishing. So um, this is not a particularly protective mask, but we're in one of those very, um, France has been categorized into red, orange, and green areas in terms of severity of the uh, virus. And if this will also indicate the strictness of the um, opening up after lockdown. So the red areas will have the strictest regulations for the longest time. And fortunately, I'm in um, a green area. So the southwest of France, see, not surprisingly, the, the uh, northeast of France, which borders with Italy, of course, you know, um, perhaps for that reason, probably for that reason, had a lot of cases of the virus. And then you've got the big cities like Paris, Whereas I'm right down in the southwest, which is a very rural area. And um, so we're green area. And it, I mean, it can't be complacent, but it does feel very safe. And I was listening to um, the news in the UK as well about, that. well, they haven't got any plans for coming out of lockdown at the moment. Um, they don't seem to have had any plans for anything along the way, really. Um, just perhaps I'll wait and see what other people do and just crib that. And there was a minister being interviewed on um, breakfast television. And of course, politicians language, I was particularly struck by his language. I seem to be mopping up the language patterns in the recent videos. And he was using such vague expressions like, you know, that there are plans in place. So I'm like, yes, what plans? Which place? And we are improving on what we're doing. Um, details will be announced quite soon. I mean, it's so abstract. And that is one of the kind of criticisms. I mean, it's one thing to want to encourage people to be positive, but it's another thing to be, um, if you like, deluding people. And so one of the areas where the language has been interpreted in different ways is the whole area of testing. And so there was a commitment on the part of the British government to do a 100,000 tests um, by the end of April, um, which they claim to have done, <laughs> which is uplifting for people but not necessarily useful scientifically if that's not the case i noticed somebody posted on twitter this morning and said um i've got a thousand new girlfriends i sent out a thousand letters in the post <laughs> which is one of the criticisms that's being leveled it's like what did it mean to have achieved that number of predicted tests by the end of april did it mean they'd just be sent out by post or did it mean they would have the results of that number of tests? Or did it mean that number of tests would have been conducted in person? That's what's ambiguous. I think the, um, I suppose the kind of other side of this is that you could say, well, there's tests being done, but the other side of that is if a government or anybody for that matter can't be honest and be prepared to be vulnerable about the truth of the situation, and I've touched on the truth in recent videos, then you don't trust them. And one of the things that's really, I think, emerging, I believe, um, as being important for the way we go forward into the future uh, is trust. I've been asked if I would think about contributing to um, a global trust project, which is very interesting. Um, very challenging, given that I was thinking about, maybe I'll kind of let go of a lot of the traveling. Maybe I don't have to do it by traveling, we'll see. Um, so trust and vulnerability um, could be really key things 
going forward into the future. And I think if people choose to just interpret figures and abstract language um, in a way that suits them for political ends or for ego, means of their ego or for um, uh, their standing, which I suppose is the same as ego, then that diminishes trust irrespective of what's actually happening, for example, with the tests. And so the language pattern that is being used, there are abstract nouns and abstract verbs. So non-specific nouns and verbs, non-specific subjects, non-specific activities. So there are plans in place. Well, what kind of plans specifically? In place, where, with, with whom? We are improving, you know, what we're doing, improving in what way specifically? Now, it would be tedious, I think, if we spoke in specifics all the time, it's impractical to do that. But there's times when it's very important, when we want to give ourselves or other people specific reassurance, when we want to know how we're going to measure our success, you know, vague plans and vague words. And I've seen these kinds of this kind of language on appraisal forms often when it says, well, so-and-so needs to improve their communication skills. Well, what the hell does that mean? And, and it's got no measure. It sometimes doesn't have a reason why or specific examples of what needs to be changed. So non-specific language can be an issue. And if you're using it, for example, in the way that you are thinking about um, goals for yourself, then equally, it's not, it's just, it's not useful. And if you're on the receiving end of it, and it was interesting yesterday, I did, um, I was uh, interviewed by my colleague, my friend Isadora, in, um, who's based in Greece, and I run a program, I run some programs in Greece, and travel permitting, it's very likely I'll go back and run a program, possibly in um, Mykonos. I'll give you links in the tags or in the description of this video to the interview that I did yesterday. Um, because it was interesting that um, she asked me, and there were questions coming from the people watching the interview as well, and she asked me about uh, transformation and metamorphosis. Um, now, as an interviewee, if I were to just answer that straight off, I, I'm wasting my time um, because I don't know what she means by that, or I don't know the person who's asking the question, I don't know what they mean, you know, by these abstract words, these what we call sometimes big chunk words, um, and so I go off on a route, which is my meaning of the word. And what's the chance that that's going to answer their question? I know some people just ask questions for the sake of asking the questions, and then it almost doesn't matter at all. But I don't, that's not the case um, yesterday. And so I have talked about uh, clean language in the past and clean questions. And that is one of the ways in which we can clarify. And it does so much more than just clarify what somebody's saying. You know, and I actually believe I did, I did go back and say, well, transformation, what kind of transformation? What does that, what does that mean for you? Uh, to find out what, what are we talking about here? What specifically are we talking about? Now, that is going to achieve a lot of, effects. It's going to show that I am listening. I am concerned to address the underlying question. I'm not just going to talk for the sake of talking, which is quite easy to do in an interview. Um, it's just like, oh, well, here's a chance for me to talk about this, rather than find out what exactly is the, this person asking for. There was a, an example of another. There were a few... Um, interesting, well, very interesting questions in this interview yesterday. And uh, one person asked a question about whether it's necessary to 
uh, I may not have got the words exactly, whether it's necessary to go through the darkness in order to come out with the kind of learning and the light on the other side. <laughs> that wasn't a clean question at all. And interestingly, with that kind of question, I always remember something that struck me that my own mentor said to me years ago. He said, the question presupposes the answer. When you've got a question like that, which is loaded with content, it presupposes the answer. I remember my mum, when she was alive, obviously when she was alive, a um, long time ago, and she had been burgled. And the police asked her if she would go and do a, you know, pick out the suspect from a lineup. Don't know how she was going to do that because they were wearing a balaclava. Anyway, she was, she was in her late 80s then. And, um, and she said to me, what do you think, Susan? Um, do you think I should go? Do you think I should go to um, pick out? She, because her sister, Eileen, was saying, well, you mustn't go because they'll know who you are. I mean, they don't because you're behind a kind of one-way um, mirror uh, glass. And, but her sister was saying, oh, no, it's dangerous to do that. You shouldn't do that. My mum always, was always a pretty ballsy lady. And she said, what do you think, Susan? Do you think I should go to the police? And I got a sense it was a real highlight for her. There was only one answer to that question, and it was yes. Um, the answer was presupposed in the question. And she went, I can't remember whether she saw the guy or how she would even have known. Um, but she would have known what he sounded like because she, he had spoken to her. He burgled the house while she was in it. Um, anyway, so this about the main thread of this uh, recording is about the um, non-specific words, non-specific nouns and um, activities. And you can be specific to yourself, be specific to other people. And if you're on the receiving end, and it's important to really check what's being meant before you either accept or answer a question, then ask, ask and find out. Because we all have our own, as we say in NLP, unique map of the world. One word can mean, it will mean something quite different to every individual that uses it and hears it. So, et voila, as we say, on a rainy but getting warmer day. I think the heat's due to come back here in France. So, um, I was having a bit of a celebrate of that, sort of a dance on my own in the kitchen this morning, which I really enjoyed. Dance like nobody's watching. <laughs> I'd probably dance the same way if they were, to be honest.